Welcome to the Law of Multiple Proportions. This lesson is a second of our series on the laws that govern or determine how chemical formulas are put together. Let's take a look at what the Law of Multiple Proportions says. The Law of Multiple Proportions states that if two elements form more than one compound, then the ratios of the masses of the second element, which combine with fixed mass of the first element, will be ratios of small whole numbers. So at first glimpse, this law is a lot to take in at once. It looks very complicated. It's actually not that complicated, so we're going to break it down step by step to see just exactly what it's talking about. We're going to go through this line by line. If two elements, let's say A and element B, form more than one compound, so that could be AB or AB2 or AB4 as some examples. Then the ratios of the masses, which tells us we're looking for a mass ratio, just like we did in the last video. Then the ratios of the masses of the second element, that's element B, which combine with a fixed mass of the first element, that's element A, will be ratios of small whole numbers. That means one, two, three, etc. Let's run through what this says with two actual elements forming actual compounds. So we have carbon, that's going to be our first element, and we're going to have oxygen as our second element. Now we need to have a fixed mass of the first element. The carbon has to have a fixed mass. So we're going to say we have 100 grams of carbon. And carbon can form two different compounds with oxygen. The first one it can form is carbon monoxide. The second compound it could possibly form is carbon dioxide. So to form carbon monoxide, we would need to add a certain amount of oxygen. And that amount would be experimentally determined. So for this 100 grams of carbon, we would have to add 133 grams of oxygen to get carbon monoxide and we would see that it takes 266 grams of oxygen to combine with that 100 grams of carbon to form carbon dioxide. So now we know the masses of the second element which combine with a fixed mass, the 100 grams of the first element. Now we need to look at the mass ratio, this component here, the mass ratio that it talked about. We're looking at mass ratios of oxygen because it says masses of the second element. So the mass ratio of oxygen that was used is 266 grams for the carbon dioxide over 133 grams of oxygen used in carbon monoxide, which simplifies to 2 over 1, which is the same as saying a 2 to 1 ratio. And these are indeed small whole numbers. And based on what we know of chemical formulas, CO2 and CO, that should be intuitively correct that there's twice as much oxygen in the second one by mass as there is in the first one. One of the reasons this law is important is that it tells you that carbon could never combine with oxygen in a ratio that was not a whole number. So you could not get carbon and oxygen 1.5 for example. If experimental evidence did give you a ratio of 1.5 to 1, you would have to do some math to make it into a small whole number ratio in this case multiplying it to something like this. The law says that this is not allowed. That wraps up our lesson on the law of multiple proportions. Any questions you have, write them down in your notes and bring them with you to class.